you would stand with me as we look at 2 Timothy, two verses, the first one is out of chapter 1, uh, verse 5. And it says, when I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, he's talking to Timothy now, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and in thy mother Eunice, and I am persuaded that is in thee also. And then the second verse, take your Bibles and turn just a few pages over to 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 15. And it says this, And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. Let's pray yet again. Father, we do come today. Father, I pray for those that, uh, uh, Father, are sick, those that are grieving because of illness or surgery. Father, I pray, Lord, for... Uh, uh, for the many people that uh, have been sick this past uh, week, many are homebound. Father, I also lift up Bob and Faye to you in the hospital. I thank you for those that have been released. I lift up Patty Page. But now I pray for those of us that are here today. Father, you have blessed us with family. You've blessed us with uh, a church family that we are able to come and love one another. And Father, I pray now that everything that comes from your word will bring honor to you. And if there's someone here that needs to receive Christ as their Savior today, Father, I pray that they would uh, boldly take their stand for you. Maybe some that need to come and join this church. Some that need to come and, and Father, say they need to be baptized in obedience. Father, obedience, something that is lacking in our world today, would we be obedient to you is our prayer. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. You may be seated. Well, you may remember when you really were in a spot and you needed mom to help you. How do you remember your mother? Uh, do you remember some, some good memories of her? I read a story of a woman who received a phone call from a mom who was uh, calling her daughter, and she said, How are you feeling today, honey? And the woman replied, I'm not well, I'm, I'm terrible. My head is splitting today. My back and my legs are killing me from doing so much work around the, the house. The kids have made a mess, and, and the dog has torn up the yard, and, and I've been working on it, and I, I, I'm just sick. The kids are now driving me crazy. The caller very sympathetically said, Listen, honey, I want you to go pour yourself a hot bath and go get into it. And, and then when you get out, you just go ahead and lay down because I'm going to be there in just a moment. I'm going to take care of the children. I'm going to take care of the house. I'm going to clean everything while you get some rest today. And by the way, how's Sam? The person on the other end said, who's Sam? She said, oh my, I'm so sorry. I must have dialed the wrong number. I was trying to call my daughter. And she said, I'm... <laughs> I'm so sorry because I thought you were my mom. And the lady began to cry and she said, does this mean you're not coming over today? <laughs> oh my. Well, what makes you think of your mother and, and when she was there? Some of you may actually have sad memories of a mom that may have abandoned you. Maybe some sad memories of a mom that really didn't care for you, but some of you have glad memories. You have glad memories of a, a mom who, who cared for your needs and cared for the family. Uh, you may have memories of a mom who used to open her Bible and, and tell you stories. Uh, you may have memories of a mom that brought you to church and sat with you at church and Maybe even on Saturday night, remembering a mother that wrote out that tithe check and, and along with dad would say, let's get together and let's pray for the services tomorrow that somebody would get saved. Some of you may have a sad memory 
of the day your mom went home to be with Jesus. Folks, I can tell you, I, I've been there too, and that's a sad day. And you may have held her hand and, and kissed her as she slipped out into eternity. Today's passage is Paul reminding Timothy about his godly heritage and about his mother. You see, Timothy's mother was a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And in fact, not only his mother, but also his grandmother. And now, Timothy has reached the place that he is pastoring a church. He is pastor at the church in Ephesus. And, and so Paul, in writing to Timothy, is reminding him of the faith that dwells in his heart that first dwelt in his mother's heart and in his grandmother's heart. You see, Paul knew about that because Paul was there the day that Eunice and Lois got saved. Well, let's look at this passage and, and dig into it just a little deeper. We're going to start with the second verse from the third chapter of Timothy and look at this mother's scriptural foundation. Let me read this verse again. And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures. Did you see when Timothy began to know the word of God? When he was a child. Now notice what the scripture is able to do. Which are able to make thee wise unto salvation. And how is that true? Through faith which is in Christ Jesus. Amen. You see, Timothy's mother and grandmother began teaching him the scriptures when he was just a child. Let me tell you, children love to hear stories. Mom, Grandma, Dad, Grandpa, listen closely. Tell these children the stories of the Word of God. Turn off that television and talk about the Lord. Listen, turn off the news and, and talk about these Bible stories. That's what's going to give them the strength to live in these evil days. Listen, children love to hear the stories of the Word of God. Now, when Timothy was growing up, there weren't any picture books like we have today. Uh, there, there probably wasn't any teaching posters like you're able to get with the story on the back and the picture on the front that you can uh, read to your kids at dinner time or at bedtime. Listen, this was the oral telling of the scriptures that were passed down to these children. Now, Timothy was learning about the Word of God, the Bible, from both his mother and his grandmother. So picture this, if you would. At times, he was on his mother's knee, and Mom was telling him these Bible stories. At other times, it could be that he was sitting on Grandma's lap, and Grandma was telling him the Bible stories. It could be that he was laying in bed, and there in the bed... Uh, at nighttime, he was being told the stories of the Word of God. Listen, what a marvelous heritage it is to learn the Word of God from your family. I want to go back and I want us to just imagine some of these scenes. Because can you imagine them walking along and then Eunice is looking at the, the trees and the animals and says, Timothy, let me tell you, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Let me tell you the story of creation. Oh, God made everything, and He loves us, but Adam and Eve sinned. And so God created a, a, a proper covering, and there had to be a blood sacrifice for that sin. And, and let me tell you about that. It could be that when it began to rain, Lois said, Timothy, uh, let me tell you the story about a man named Noah who, who had faith in God. And when God said to build a boat, Noah may have said, what's a boat? And, and, and he said, it's going to rain. And Noah may have said, well, what's rain? And, and, and he said, just trust me. 
And Noah trusted God. And he built an ark. And he, he knew that, that God was going to send a flood. Because he just simply trusted God. Let me tell you, you know why we don't see obedience in our culture today? Is because people won't trust God for the outcome. Oh, can you imagine that Eunice found a little stone along the, the ground and said, Timothy, let me tell you the story about one brave young man who when an evil enemy named Goliath was calling out the people of God and everybody else cowered in fear. This young boy named David said, Is there not a cause? And he took the stone and he took a sling and he killed that giant with the giant's own sword. Oh, listen, maybe uh, they saw a fish and... Then Lois, the grandmother, said, uh, Timothy, let me tell you about a big fish and a prophet that would not listen to instruction. And as a result, disaster came and he got swallowed up. But he learned his lesson and he did what God told him to do. And he went and told people that God was going to send a Messiah, that there was going to be one who would come who would pay for the sin of the world. Oh, listen, and then they taught him as he grew older to memorize Scripture. They taught him the Song of Solomon where it talks of Jesus Christ being the one that is altogether lovely. Uh, the book of Isaiah where it says that the Messiah would come who would be wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquities. Oh, he told about Daniel who talked about the fourth man in the furnace and how that was God who was going to save us even through the fire. And Timothy would say, Mom, Grandma, tell me again. Oh, tell me the word of God again because it meets the need of my soul. Parents, listen to me. Your children need a good scriptural foundation. And that's not only for moms, this is for both moms and dads. Amen. Your children need a scriptural foundation to build their life on. It's not enough that they have a scientific foundation. That's not going to meet the need of the heart. It's not enough that they have a scholarly foundation. That's not enough to meet the need of the heart. Listen, it's not enough that they have a singing foundation that's not enough to give praise to God. It's not enough that they have a sports foundation. They need a scriptural foundation. And so Timothy would say, the pastor at Ephesus, listen, the B-I-B-L-E, now that's the book for me. I stand alone on the Word of God, the B-I-B-L-E. And that was planted first in him at the home. Amen. He had a scriptural foundation foundation that was planted there by a saved mom and grandma. But second of all, look at that because I'm getting ahead of myself. There is also a saving faith. Oh, his life was built not only on a scriptural foundation, but also by the testimony of his mother and grandmother. Look at 2 Timothy. And here we read, and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. Timothy's mother and grandmother trusted Jesus as their Savior. Now when did that happen? <laughs> oh, listen to me. As we study the scriptures, we see that they learned about Jesus as their Savior and their study of the scriptures caused them to see that they were sinners in need of a Savior. You see, the Old Testament doesn't give us the answer of the, of the Messiah who's come, but it tells us about the Messiah who is coming, because we have all sinned. And you see, Eunice and Lois knew that they had sinned, and they had paid attention to that Old Testament that, taught them about how they needed a Savior. That's why Paul says 
they are able to make thee wise unto salvation. Now, it is a foolish thing not to be saved. Did you know that? So do you want to be wise or do you want to be foolish? It's the wise thing to listen to the word of God and be saved. It is a foolish thing to neglect the word of God and be lost. Listen, they learned that salvation would come through a Messiah who God would provide. And they were saved by faith in that Messiah, who is the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, listen, it is believed that Lois and Eunice were saved during Paul's first missionary journey. Now, if you turn in your Bibles to Acts chapter 13, beginning with verse 13, I'm going to tell you the story about what happened. Because there Paul went to the region that Lois and Eunice lived, Perga of Pamphylia. And he went into the synagogue one day, and the scribe was there and reading the word of God, and he said, Does anyone else have anything to say about this Bible scripture? And Paul stood up, and I'm about at verse 18 to 20 now, and he began to preach. And he began to preach about how that the Israelites were in bondage in Egypt but how that God delivered them out of bondage. And he went back and he reminded them of of how the death angel passed over and and, and how that they took the blood of the lamb and put it on the doorpost and how that was a symbol of the coming Messiah whose blood would be shed so that they might be saved. And he talked about the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And he concluded there in verses 38 and 39 and said, Through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sin. Lois, Eunice, your sins can be forgiven if you will trust in Jesus. And by him all that believe are justified. Oh, listen to me, my friend. If you're here today, I want you to hear the same message. You can be saved. It doesn't matter who you are, what you've done. I want you to know God loves you. He doesn't love our sin. Listen, there must be a repentance, a change, a turning away from sin and a turning to Jesus Christ. God hates sin, but He loves you. And so just as Paul stood that day and said, there is a loving God who provided that Messiah, who died on a rough, rugged cross. And if you will just simply believe for forgiveness of sin, you will be justified. I believe that day when the invitation was given, Eunice and Lois got up and walked forward and gave their heart to Jesus. Listen, they placed their faith in Christ and they were gloriously saved and they publicly took their stand For Jesus. Now as a result, Timothy came to know the Lord. Listen, mom and dad, the natural result of your salvation should be that your faith is passed down to others. Listen, their salvation was genuine and it produced fruit. Now how do you do that? Well, notice what it said in 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 5. It said they had unfeigned faith. And that's pretty true to the, to the Greek because the Greek word there is a negative with the word hypocrites from which we get our word hypocrite which means unfeigned or not hypocritical. You know something, family? You know more about one another than anybody else. Your kids see what goes on in your home. And and you need an unfeigned faith, a non-hypocritical faith. What you say you are in public, you better be in private because little eyes are watching. Do you know that? 
And Lois and Eunice had an unfeigned or not hypocritical faith. And their faith was genuine. In fact, uh, your Bible may say it's a sincere faith or it's a genuine faith. But I like that word unfeigned because it was not hypocritical. It was the real thing. And their faith touched everything that they did. Folks, listen to me. Don't you leave your Christianity in the pew. You better take it with you when you go to work. You better take it with you when you're dealing with other people. In fact, you better take it with you when you're talking about people, with, uh, about things that are going on in the world. Listen, you need an unfeigned faith. That's what it's going to take to change your life and change your family life. Their faith resulted in others not only being saved, but it resulted in others becoming disciples and growing in Christ. Now let me wrap this up because I know it's Mother's Day. There came a day when Timothy's grandmother and then his mother got older and got sick. I can just imagine that day when Timothy's mother, Eunice, said, Timothy, come to my bedside and talk to me one more time. I'm about to go be with the Lord. I can picture Timothy sitting down there at the bedside as Eunice is passing away. And he's holding his mother's hand. And she says, Timothy, tell me a story. He said, Mama, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Can I tell you about the creation? She said, no, honey. He said, Mama, can I tell you that no matter how great this test is that you're facing, there's a little boy named David who wasn't afraid. She said, no, I don't need to hear that story. Son, tell me about Jesus. Tell me the story of Jesus. Timothy said, that's the story I love best. And so Timothy talked about how the, the day came when John the Baptist saw Jesus coming and said, Behold, the Lamb of God that will take away the sin of the world. And she said, Yes, Timothy, that's the story I want to hear. And he said, Mama, Jesus went about teaching people how that they could be more like him and and, and, and he talked about the Beatitudes. And, and, and Mama, Jesus, he went to the rough, rugged cross and paid for our sins. But Mama, that's not the end of the story. After paying for our sins, they put him in a grave. And three days later, he arose. He arose. Hallelujah, Mama. Jesus arose. And she said, yes, Timothy, that's the story. And Mama, Jesus is coming again one day. And there's going to be a shout from glory and a trump of the archangel and the dead in Christ will rise first. And we that are alive will be gathered up in heaven with him to be with our Lord forever. And Eunice said, that's the story. Oh, Timothy, thank you for telling me about Jesus. Listen, it was Eunice that first told Timothy about Jesus. And when Timothy was no longer holding his mama's hand, Jesus was taking her hand and leading her to heaven. Folks, listen to me. One thing I know, this life is short. What are you going to do with Jesus? Timothy had fond memories of his mother. He remembered a love that led him to see Jesus, a love that only a mother has. Heard about a school teacher who was teaching fractions, and she gave this question to the student. She said, suppose your mother baked a pie, and there were six of you, your mom and your dad and four children. What fraction of the pie would you get and a little boy raised his hand. She said, yes. He said, one-fifth. And she said, you don't know your fractions. I said, there were six of you. She said, no, but you don't know my mama. Because as much as my mama 
would like a piece of the pie. She wanted everybody else to get more. And so she cut it into five pieces. I know the answer you're looking for is one-sixth, but in my house, it would be one-fifth because Mama takes care of us. You're here today. Your Mama is probably here with you. You know, your Mama's been praying for you to be saved. You may be a Mama here with some of your children. It could be that your children have been praying for you, Mom, to be saved. I remember praying for my mama to be saved. And I remember the day when I heard a a, a wailing and a crying in the back of the church. And I said, my soul, who in the world is that? And I was sitting right about on the second row. And I turned around and looked and it was my mother who was repentant about her sinful life and came and knelt and bitterly wept over sin. And I watched my pastor's wife go down and just wrap her up in her arms and lead her to Jesus. Amen. Oh, listen, I saw her got saved. And I saw a miracle take place. All the alcohol in the home went out the door. And money started coming in the door. Amen. It's amazing what happens when you give up sinful living and start living for Jesus. Oh, listen, that's a sweet memory I have of Seeing my mother have a changed life. Seeing a home that was changed. How will you be remembered by your family? Whether you're a son or a daughter, a mom or a dad, a grandmother or a grandfather, how will you be remembered by your family? Will you be remembered as one that has been saved and your life has changed? Two nights ago, I went up to the hospital and sat at the edge of Faye Gaines' bed, and it was just the two of us and one family member. I said, Faye, tell me about when you accepted Christ. Tell me about the difference Jesus has made in your life. She began to share. Oh, listen, I love hearing stories of people's salvation experience. How will you be remembered? When it comes time for your memorial service, can people remember you having a faith that is sincere and genuine? Will they remember you talking about Jesus and how Jesus forgave you of your sins in the day you were saved? Maybe you're here today with your mother, and the greatest gift you could give her is for her to know that you gave your life to Jesus. She's been praying for you to have a change in life. Do you need to come today and give your life to Christ? Maybe you're here today and your mother's not here, but you've heard the gospel. Jesus, the Messiah, came into the world and died on a rough, rugged cross. And there His rich royal blood was shed And that he was buried, (laughs) but three days later he arose. Hallelujah. Do you need to come and give your life to Jesus? Maybe you've been saved somewhere along the line, but you've not followed in obedience. Would you come today and say, today I'm coming because I want to be obedient to the Lord. You see, that's what brings on so much heartache in our world today. There's a lack of obedience. Would you come and and be obedient in baptism. Maybe God has called you to come and join this church. Would you be obedient to His calling and come join today? What is the Holy Spirit saying to you? Not what is the pastor saying, but what is the master saying to you? Would you come? Would you give your life to Jesus? Would you make a commitment to live for Him? Would you be obedient? I'm going to ask every head.